Copies of floor amendment number 10 have been distributed. Thank you very much. Representative Ward. Mr. Speaker, I move for the adoption of the floor amendment that allows an opt-out for our teachers and for our keiki. Thank you very much. Representative McDermott. I second the motion. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion, Representative Ward? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we all know that our state motto is the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. After listening to the people for five days, I think we should add that it's perpetuated by Hawaii's families and the fairness to them, Mr. Speaker. This amendment is about the teachers and the keiki to opt out. Uh, Representative Ward, clarification, in support, of course. Yes, sir. Please proceed. Yes, sir. If there was anything clear after five days of listening, the first clarion call was protect our churches, protect our pastors. But the second very, 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 very clear clarion call was protect our kids. Mother after mother after mother said, you know, I don't want my kids to have to learn how the, the homosexuals make love to each other. That was such a clarion call, Speaker. And I know that in my previous remarks, I said that, you know, when, when we have a constitution that denies people citizenship because of a race or denies them a vote because of gender, we have a constitution in the magic of America that's self-correcting. But never, ever did we have to teach the sexual practices of those subcultures or those genders or those ethnicities. But the trend is, as first comes same-sex marriage, then comes a curriculum revolution. And Mr. Speaker, this is not imaginary. This is the empirical evidence from Massachusetts. This is the empirical evidence from Canada. The corollary that they have seen, and we will see in Hawaii, unless we pretend, is that after same-sex marriage comes the sexual revolution in our schools, in our curriculum. In caucus yesterday, I brought up similar thoughts to what I've just said about an opt-out for our keiki and opt-out for our teachers. And they said, well, look, this bill has got nothing to do with education. Uh, we'll take that up later. Mr. Speaker, that was a th thumbing of our nose at the people of Hawaii who mother after mother after mother said, protect our kids. So to say that this is not about education is really, really naive and really, really is taking us into a direction that is not true. Mr. Speaker, we don't have bears in Hawaii. But we had some mama bears and some papa bears speaking very, 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 very loudly. We saw the Japanese mother saying, Kodomo no tame ni, for the sake of our kids. Let them opt out of this training. We saw our Japanese mothers. In fact, Speaker, you know my daughter's from Nanjing. I was so touched by immigrant after immigrant after immigrant who said, our culture says, you know, this is not right. And then we even had a, a uh, Chinese engineer, economist, who said, you know, if you look at all the highest spending visitors, the Chinese are the highest at about 400 bucks a day. And the amount of visitors and children that come from Southeast Asia, that may decrease because it's now worth $755 million per year. Not the LaCroix study that is 254 million over three years. So what the Chinese immigrants have said is watch out. Even if you lose 10% of the take of the students and the visitors who come here for weddings, that's $75 million per year. If you lose 15%, 20%, 40%, same-sex marriage does not become a winning proposition. It becomes a losing proposition. So, Mr. Speaker, we heard from the Japanese, we heard from the Chinese, we heard from the Vietnam veterans, those who said we fought to keep these freedoms which you are now taking away from us. But, Mr. Speaker, in the loudest, in the deepest, in the most piercing call of all, we heard from the native Hawaiians. We heard from the soul of the Aina. We heard the native Hawaiians crying out in the voice of one Colette Machado, who spoke with such passion and commitment. And Speaker, I hate to say that she, maybe she spoke so strong that when she fell over in the lobby Friday night, we were all struck. 
And for those who are here who pray, still pray for Colette Machado. She needs our help. She helped us to voice the words of the Native Hawaiian into the membership. Mr. Speaker, we also heard the, the cries of Hawaiian leader Jonah Kauvai. That struck a bow to my heart, Mr. Speaker, because he said what is now upon us is as dangerous as the 1893 overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom. Representative Fukumoto, would you like to yield your time? It cannot be five minutes yet. Yes, I'll yield my time. just getting started. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Fukumoto. Jonah Kauvai compared what is now being done as a plot of the next overflow of the Hawaii, overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom comparable to the 1893. This time it's cultural, the last time it was political, and a total takeover of the Hawaiian people. Mr. That Speaker. was heavy. Speaker? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Representative Evans? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, um, Floor Amendment 10 is about teaching sexuality, health education material in school, and I'm sorry, but I think I don't understand where the conversation is going. Thank okay, you. Point of clarification, thank you. I believe Rep. Ward is making a nexus to his floor speech thank you. to the floor amendment. If, if he goes further, I, I, I will make sure he's... The good representative from the Big Island will get it, because I'm going to talk about Teneri Ma'afala. Let, let's, let's stay on focus on the uh, amendment, Representative Ward. The most bold and outspoken of all the witnesses, of all the testifiers of the last day, were probably the historical essence of the ethos and the zeitgeist of what's going on now was Tanari Mafa'ala. I'm not going to repeat what he said, but he's being crucified for what he said, and he's now the Chick-fil-A of Hawaii. He's being called one, how can you say such things? But within the heart of the man, came this issue, and I'm coming to the one for the good representative, uh, representative from the Big Island. Stay focused on the Yes, I'm the staying terror. focused. I'm just trying to get her attention so she knows when it comes, she gets uh, the whole message. Okay, Rep Representative Ward, uh, it's, it's for everybody, not okay. just, it's for all the members. Well, no she personal me tax, out, so no, no personal she tax. She was not following it. Let's, okay. let's stay focused I've on your amendment. I've said all of amendment. this to say two things. I've said all of those preliminary remarks to say two things. The people of Hawaii are demanding, yes, demanding, protect our children. That's the message that these people are shouting about, these people in the, in the audience are talking about. We demand you protect our children. This is a non-negotiable. This is not something that is a maybe or a something. And I don't want to get up, riled up like Tanari did, but you heard him say, you're going to take my life before you're going to take this thing into its next stage. That's what Tanari said. This body, and I'm glad that the representative from uh, Diamond Head said that we're duped in 1998. But Mr. Speaker, these people are not going to be duped again. You know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. These people are not going to be duped. They're not stupid. They are listening, they're watching, they're alive. They are awake to what's going on. And Mr. Speaker, when you get a, a mama bear and a papa bear awakened, and they're ashamed and angry to protect their children, we only have the throes of the first awakening of them right now. We've got an embarrassed and shamed mother bear who's out there because they were duped, and now they're going to put themselves into action. Now, a second point. That was the first point of what all the introduction was about. The second point is this. We now have the opportunity to respond to what the people are talking about, protect our families. We now have the opportunity. This amendment does exactly that by saying, and I read specifically from the, from the amendment, a parent shall not be required to ensure the attendance of their child at sex education classes if the material promotes or otherwise addresses homosexuality or homosexual relationships. And then it says the parents will not be fined or put in jail or et cetera, et cetera. The point is, Mr. Speaker, we need to inoculate the children. I mean, all of us are adults, no big deal. But when this comes in with graphic descriptions and practices of masturbation on different positions, we are going overboard, Mr. Speaker. This is not a two-way street, this is a one-way street. 
We don't have to learn and teach those sexual practices. And I know some are going to say, well, we have an opt-out in the DOE. The Attorney General has asked, if we have this as the law of the land, is this controversial policy always going to be something you can opt out of? Nobody can answer that. And maybe some people will stand up and probably, probably respond to say, well, Ward, that's not the case. We got an opt-out policy. Well, show me where it happened in Massachusetts. Show me where it happened in Canada. Show me where parents are being told they can't be told when their kids do these things. Mr. Speaker, this is all about the keiki. This is all about the kids. This is about their future. This is about the way that not only the, the children can opt out, but you know, in my network of people, I've got some teachers who dread having to teach this lifestyle. Representative Johansson, would you yield your time? Mr. Speaker, I yield my time. Thank you very Mr. much. Mr. Speaker, can we have no empathy for those who genuinely believe that God exists, that he is real, and he has obligation by which he puts boundaries around behaviors, of which this is not one that a teacher would feel obliged to teach. For the sake of our teachers, Mr. Speaker, this is the half of the amendment. For the sake of the keikis, this is the other half of the amendment. So, Mr. Speaker, this gives us an opportunity to say, yeah, we heard you. We want to be pono. We want to do the right thing, and we want to protect our families. Hawaii and aloha are about our families. It's more about what we're going to do now to protect them, either in this session, in this now uh, amendment, or in the January 2014 session. Because these bears who are now protecting their young, they're not going to be fooled again, Mr. Speaker. So may the right decision be made. Thank you. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative McDermott. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to uh, also insert comments in the journal, if please. Sure. Representative McDermott, in support of the uh, amendment, I assume? In support of the amendment, certainly. Please proceed. Uh, there is no dispute that the BOE has a controversial policy Issue, current controversial issues policy in place currently. No dispute. There's no dispute that currently it's not part of the curriculum. No dispute in that at all. What we're looking as we go forward, once this is passed and it becomes the law of the land, what happens then? Now I asked the BOE uh, chairman and the DOE uh, superintendent to testify in a written letter. I asked the judiciary chair and the speaker to have them show up and testify. They were not there as part of the uh, official group with the governor. Department of Health was there, but they were not there. The preponderance, well, many of the questions were regarding education at the hearings. Mr. Speaker, the matter is this. It doesn't matter what the law is, but when the law does change, if we have an activist judge, someone brings their child, says, my child goes to school, the illustrations illuminating the learning objectives, a mom and dad, two parents walking a child, and these are particularly at elementary school level, by the way, to illustrate a lesson, he'll say, you know, you don't show two homosexual parents there, you really should, and matter of fact, by not having it, you're creating an environment, environment of prejudiceness. And my son feels a hostile environment, or my daughter, who, of course, we adopted. So you need to change. So the judge will say, yeah, you're right. It's not equal. I asked Justice Levinson those questions point blank. And I must say, he was honest because he didn't answer directly. He obfuscated. He said, well, this is a marriage bill. He didn't answer the questions directly. I respected that because he didn't want to answer because he's his judicial thought process, that's the kind of judge who would find discrimination in that. And if we have one judge, a low-level judge, that would find that as a discriminatory practice, if the governor or the state doesn't want to appeal it, then it's implemented, just like that. It doesn't matter what the Board of Education's controversial policy is. It doesn't matter if there's a court decision. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what their current opt-out clause is. If there's a court decision, it doesn't matter. Now, the crux to the issue, Mr. Speaker, as I see it, is some people, by the way, uh, I have, I wrote the BOE a detailed letter asking for responses, detailed responses. One of them, I'm going to paraphrase, can a teacher opt out, teaching material? And it says any personal matters pertaining to a teacher's working conditions will be handled on a case-by-case -case basis. I asked, what if we have transgender students high school students who want to shower in the opposite sex bathroom. The response was very telling. 
The department will work closely with the student's family to, and the school to appropriately address the needs of the students. Which students? They didn't tell me. I mean, this is the kind of non-answers I got. And I do believe that's the why they didn't testify. So what we're looking at is a lawsuit in the future and a court order from a judge saying, you know what, that's discrimination. I mean, Mr. Speaker, we have the, the, the challenge is that the folks equate this behavior with a benign genetic characteristic like skin color. If someone said, hey, you don't have any uh, uh, white people or brown people or red people in the Dick and Jane books, oh, we, we change that. That's why we don't have Dick and Jane books anymore. We have more up-to-date books that show all peoples of all colors and shapes and sizes. Well, the proponents of this measure think that this private behavior is the same as a benign genetic characteristic and should be treated as such. And if it is the same as a benign genetic characteristic, then it must be in the textbooks. Though, therefore, they want to inculcate the youth with this new way of thinking. It takes one judge, one activist judge, to override a BOE controversial policy, override a, any, any opt-out clauses, one decision. That's all it takes. So we, we, we didn't get any answers all week. And uh, again, there is a policy in place now. It's not in the curriculum now. But this bill ain't law yet. And once the bill is passed, I will bet you my house. I will bet you my house that within 10 years, if we don't have a protection, this will be in the curriculum as, a, as an illustrative tool for a lesson plan. And every state that's passed it has had impacts on the Department of Education and how they operate. So anyone who tells you otherwise isn't being truthful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Representative. Further discussion on the four amendment before us? Representative Fale. Uh, Mr. Speaker, in support. In support, please proceed. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm very disappointed that during the hearings that the Department of Education and the Board of Education was not represented at the hearings. And apparently, Mr. Speaker, that was by design, not by accident. And when the Board of Education, when the, when the uh, President of the Board of Education um, arrived to testify, he was told that he could not testify, Mr. Speaker. And there's, uh, I'm curious. Mr. Speaker, as to why that was the case. Apparently, he didn't have a number or something, and that it was um, unimportant to, to the matter that we were discussing, Mr. Speaker. But apparently, to thousands of mothers and fathers across the state of Hawaii, it is important. We've gone through a number of these measures. We've gone through all these amendments, Mr. Speaker. We know there's flaws. We know there's mistakes. Yet, we insist that the, the bill is infallible, that there's nothing that needs to be fixed, nothing that needs to be uh, maybe improved here or there. Mr. Speaker, this, is, this amendment is another attempt to try and make sure that we do. In this state, Mr. Speaker, in this state, we have probably one of the greatest varieties, greatest, one of the most diverse culturally in the entire country. And it's probably very important to have mothers and fathers here in the state of Hawaii to pass on cultural values, to pass on legacies and heritage and things like that, Mr. Speaker. So I started making some phone calls. I, I, I wanted to find out what nations in Asia have passed same-sex marriage. There's none, Mr. Speaker. What nations uh, throughout the Pacific Islands have passed same-sex marriage? There's only two. Former colonies of Western Europe, New Zealand and Australia. No Polynesian nation, no Micronesian nation, no Melanesian nation. And we have a broad, diverse, and repre a broad representation of those cultures here, Mr. Speaker, who want to pass. And there's, if there's one thing that unites these, these Pacific Island nations with their Asian co cousins, is the importance of a mother and father and the practices that are held in those countries, Mr. Speaker, that marriage is between one man and one woman. If we do not pass this amendment, Mr. Speaker, something of core cultural value and importance to those communities who live in this state, they're told you are legally inferior, you are morally inferior, and your culture, your, your, nation, your nation of origin does not believe in equality. You're somehow inferior to what we got here. And what you believe should be taught and passed on to your children cannot be incorporated into our education system. In fact, 
because you are bigots and haters and um, homophobic or whatever it is that have been used to describe those who do not support, you, you can't pass that on to your children, Mr. Speaker. It's incompatible with the education system here in the state of Hawaii. Your beliefs, the cultural beliefs that you have not inherited from generations and thousands of years that you have been a recipient of, that you are fortunate enough to be blessed with today, you cannot exempt your children from being taught something else. That, Mr. Speaker, is wrong. That, Mr. Speaker, is not aloha. If we want to talk about doing something right, talk about doing what's bono, is allowing mothers and fathers to, con to continue millennia, decades, and generations of family tradition and history and allow them the opportunity to opt out of things that they, do, that they believe are inconsistent with their own views. This goes beyond religion, Mr. Speaker. So I, I would certainly hope that myself, I'm the only individual of Tongan ancestry in elected office in the entire United States of America. My background, I come from a nation where marriage is between a man and a woman. And if my children are going to be taught something otherwise, Mr. Speaker, I believe I, as the parent, my wife is of Hawaiian, Chinese, Portuguese ancestry. I believe that my children should be able to be taught values and principles that are consistent with the culture and the heritage that I am fortunate to be blessed with. Those are also consistent with my Fijian ancestry, with my Samoan ancestry. Mr. Speaker, we have thousands, tens of thousands of people. Representative Matsumoto, will you yield your time? I do. Thank you very much. Representative Fali, please continue. We have tens of thousands of people, Mr. Speaker, who come from national origins whose values are consistent with certain things that they believe that should be passed on to their children, and that includes marriage between a man and a woman, Mr. Speaker. And if we can offer parents and children that one small thing to not say, no, you're not bigots, no, you're not legally and morally inferior because you have inherited something different. I think this is one of the things, this is one of those small things. Let's throw it out there. Let's provide that opportunity to these cultures, to these people. I think this, this amendment, Mr. Speaker, is consistent with the values of the state of Hawaii. They're consistent with the values of this body. They're consistent with who we are as a people. And it is something that should be extended, Mr. Speaker. And with that, I conclude my support for this amendment. Thank you very much.